Okay, let's continue now with our sports lighting sign tutorials. And uh, one of our subscribers sent us his design for the tennis court. Previously, we did the sports lighting for his football field. And now, uh, we will proceed now with his tennis court. This is his tennis court. It has two courts uh, in one ground. And this is his football field. It looks different from the layout that I created. But he said that in uh, Thailand, he's from Thailand. Hello. And uh, yeah, uh, it seems different and it's a little skinnier than uh, the design I created. But uh, he said, uh, thank you for the effort for the sports lighting, football lighting design calculation. And now he sent us this uh, tennis court and now we will proceed with this tennis court lighting design calculations. He already lay out the lights, which is a combination of twin brackets and single brackets on both sides. It looks okay. The picture is here and uh, I think it's a 3D or maybe an actual picture. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it looks actual. I think so. So, okay. Uh, his style of lighting a uh, tennis court is um is okay. It's also good. Actually, there are, you can you have the freedom to 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 light your tennis court. But uh, as a lighting designer, we go for the most economical and most you know maximizing the materials and the number of luminaires and of course you know the number of poles so the client will lessen the expenses but if if you plan or if the client decided to use um, poles with twin brackets then it's also fine as long as the lux level is there and um, glare and other lighting design considerations are achieved then it's fine it's your ninja way of lighting the tennis court so it's fine okay but for now, let's proceed with our tutorial with my own ninja way of lighting a tennis court. And okay, let's go. Okay, so let's start now our tennis court. But first, let's review what is tennis court's requirements. So um, like the football field, tennis court has also three classes. Class one, okay, there's also indoor and outdoor. And then for class 1, it requires 500 lux for this is for the outdoor and 300 lux for the class 2 and 200 lux for the, the class 3. And for the indoor, it's much higher. And so, okay, let's go. Okay, so I open now my Dialux file. So it's not EVO anymore because still EVO is not capable of creating a sports lighting design calculation. So this is a regular Dialux. So he sent us the dimension of the tennis court, which is 36 meters by 35.6. So let's go and create a layout like that. Because I don't have the CAD file, so what I will do is I will use the uh, reference line and write it like this. And I will say this is um, 36 meters. Now it goes on the other side. Let's go on this side. He said that the other side is also 35.5. So let's go and make it 35.5. There you go. So now let's edit the ground into that side. All right, let's go. And now, of course, we need to insert the tennis court um, calculation surface. Of course, we can go for the sports collections, uh, grid collections, or sports calculation grid collections or the sports facilities first so now this is the tennis court and let's just insert or drag and drop okay and another another one here okay uh, because his layout is a little shorter than what we have right now okay let's go and rotate this um, court maybe this is the way it should be so select this one and then rotate and then move it yes I think this is the right way then also the other one rotate and go like this uh, it's still short 
it's fine. Okay, let's move now our ground line here and check. Okay, you can edit this one later, like totally fit to each other because later on when when we when we put our floodlight it should be identical or properly aligned. All right. So you can label this one also as tennis court one and then two. And okay, good. It's already there. And then um, I would like to use again our fitting. Let's go and check the thorn lighting website. Okay, now so let's go to the thorn lighting website. And then I will select one of our best area flood or sports flood lighting for tennis court. Um, in my opinion or the, the way we do this small areas for sports, sports lighting, we usually use a flat beam like this one because it covers the area and it's you don't need to aim it, you just need to place it like an area lighting because it's it has a flat beam. So let's go and for example select, um, for now I will not follow his layout because um, his layout is a little, um, okay, if, if our subscriber did that and he achieved the last level requirements then it's fine but uh, for now I will use my own I would say ninja way of doing the lighting design so I will use this uh, flat beam with 2 kilowatts and let's see how many fittings are there or in my design compared to what he did we need to do it economically and of course achieving the last level requirements so let's go and select um, Osram lamp with um, class 1 and 2 kilowatt with uh, metal halide. Just click this one and it goes directly to your Dilux. No, it's not. It's not. You need to click this one first because I'm using Google Chrome. Okay, and then it's there now. But if you're using Internet Explorer, it will automatically go there. And yeah, all right. So after this one, go and again uh, click this floodlight arrangement, and yes, and then it will goes directly here. And let's move it here. And let's say the arrangement is like mirror, horizontal and vertically, so it will be very easy for us. Then change the height into okay. I think 12 meters is fine. Yes, so let's go and insert it. So right now, we need to just aim it flat. Make sure the photometric file is correctly arranged. So you need to go to the rotation and then check it. Go first to, the, to your plan view. Click this one. Now it's, it looks okay. If I select this one, it's wrong. This one, this one. Okay, this one is, I think, is fine. Uh, all right, and then if I use this one, it goes down. And then if I use this one, this is wrong. Okay, so I think this is the right one. So it's C, uh, C0 to G0. Okay, and then once you do that, okay, um, because I we have two um, areas, so uh, we need to calculate it one by one. And then we will copy the same arrangement of floodlights the other side later. And then you can adjust your floodlight somewhere here. If you have exact location, then do it. And then you can aim it like... Um, make it zero. Okay, this is not supposed to be zero. Make it 90. Check to the elevation. Okay, on the other side of the elevation. And it's like this. And then if I made this one as, let's say, zero again. Ah, so it goes there. And of course, we need to open our uh, calculation. You can, uh, you can manually select the points or uh, place the distance. For example, I will, check, I will change the distance into, let's say, 2.5 me meters by 2.5 meters. So the points are like that. So it's okay. 
and then go to the calculation horizontal and then display display values automatic real time into the horizontal and in zero so this is fine so uh, we will go for class one first and then later maybe into class three but for now let's achieve the class one first so this is um, average is 114 lakhs and 0.33. The requirement says that we need to have at least, this is for outdoor, at least 200 lakhs and 0.6 uniformity. Okay, so let's continue now and say, so 200 lakhs and 0.6 uniformity. And how are we going to do that? It's a little challenging now. Because see, this one is the highest part in the middle. And the lowest part is here on the side so if we set back our fitting um, here let's move it let's move our fitting a little back here and then here and let's see so 97 this is 0.65 this is fine but uh, the uniformity is very good but the uh, um, the, the lux level is not enough because it's only 97 and we need um, yeah 200 lux and if you can see that the lowest part is here okay so let's go and play with it more go to elevation side and let's tilt it accordingly so I think if I rotate it into zero negative 10 yeah, okay, this is the right one because the ma the maximum tilt of this floodlight is supposed to be is up to 10 degrees only. So, this is okay. And if you're uh, telling me that the 12 meters high is, I think, too much for a tennis court, then we can reduce the height of this pole into maybe 10 meters. And let's see what, it will, what will happen. So, now we have... Wow, 277 lux plus 0.48. The uniformity is not enough, so that is the only one. That's the only thing that we can play with right now. Um, if we increase it into 12, ah, 12 meters is so nice. Look, the lux level is now 215 and uniformity is 0 0.59. 0 0.01 point, and then we're done. So, um, Where's the lowest part? Ah, the lowest part is here in the middle. And then maybe we can just adjust this floodlight a little closer in the middle. And let's see what will happen. Now it's 0.58 uniformity. So we go and try to undo it. And let's see if we change the tilting into negative 9. Ah, perfect. Then can we just make it 5? This is the best part. Okay, this flat beam is really nice. Look, now the tilting, uh, the tilting of this area, uh, flat beam floodlight is um, five degrees only, and then it has four floodlights only per court. It's good for the client because it's it lessens the expenses, and now we achieve the uh, two points, uh, two hundred sixty-four lux and point sixty-four uniform uniformity which is the requirement for class 3 okay so now let's go to the other side if um, you want another calculation usually it affects it affects the other side of the court if there's another floodlights here so let's go and check how it would look like <laughs> 